Welcome to part two of our leadership and management discussion. So in part two, we're going to discuss question C and D. So under question C, we have described any five functions of management that you're going to uh, use in order to perform your management see, or your word functions. Then we also have um, D, which is outline five principles of management according to Henry Fayot. So we're going to quickly state the uh, management functions under C. So uh, something that you should take note under um, the management functions, you can basically use a mnemonic or an acronym. So PODIX is a simple acronym that you can use to abbreviate every uh, management function. So we're going to begin with planning. So basically, planning is defined as a process of setting goals, developing strategies, and also outlining tasks as well as schedules to accomplish the goal. So through planning, you'll be able to determine what needs to be done, who needs to do it, and also when it needs to be done. So for example, making a timetable on the word and also duty allocation each and every day. Our next management function is organizing. So organizing is basically a process of identifying and also grouping the works to be performed, defining the delegating responsibility as well as authority and also establishing relationships for the purpose of enabling people to work most efficiently. So it is basically simply getting prepared for action by arranging for all the required resources. Our next management function is directing. So under directing, this basically means giving instructions, guiding and also counseling, motivating and also leading the staff in an organization in order to do work, in order to achieve organizational goals. Our next management function is controlling. So controlling is, so this is basically a process of determining what needs to be accomplished. So this is basically evaluating performance and also applying corrective measures so that the performance takes place according to plan. Our next management function is coordinating. So under coordinating, this is basically bringing people and the activities of different group members into harmony to ensure everything that needs to be done is done according to organizational goals. Last but not the least, we have staffing. So staffing is the process of management which is mainly concerned with acquiring, developing, employing and also appraising, remunerating as well as retaining people so that the right type of uh, people are valuable in the right positions and also at the right time within an organization in order to achieve organizational goal. So we're also now going to discuss uh, D under part two. So question D reads, Outline five principles of management according to Henry Fayot. So under um, the principles, we basically have 14 principles. So you basically choose um, any of these as long as you are able to expand them and also give relevant examples. So we're going to begin with um, our first um, principle, which is unit of command. So under this principle, this basically states that every subordinate should receive orders and be accountable to one supervisor. So if an employee receives orders from more than one supervisor, it is most likely that it will create confusion as well as the conflict. Our second principle is a spirit de corps. So this is basically maintaining teamwork spirit. So team spirit helps to develop an atmosphere of mutual trust and understanding. So team increase productivity as well as the effectiveness. Our third principle under discussion is equity. So equity basically ensures that employees are treated kindly and also alike, and there is also provision of equal opportunities as well as justice, and there is also um, no form of segregation or discrimination uh, when it comes to uh, giving of tasks as well as allo allocating members to different departments. Our fourth principle is discipline. So discipline basically refers to obedience to rules, proper conduct in relation to others, respect of authority. So basically discipline is an essential uh, at, within an organization for the smooth functioning of all programs. Last but not the least, 
we have remuneration. So under remuneration, we are basically stating to say workers must be paid sufficiently as this is a chief motivation for employees and therefore greatly influences the productivity. So this basically means um, methods of remuneration should be fair, reasonable and rewarding of all effort. So this basically marks the end of part one and part two presentation under leadership and management. Thank you so much for your attention and thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.